Hi YouTubers, I'm El Gracian from elbowpepper.com. Do you remember the easy days of seed starting when all you had to do was either find a sunny window or maybe use some old shop lights and you had all that you needed to really get some seeds started? Of course, you can still do that. It is that simple, but things have changed in the market of grow lights. With the introduction of LEDs, there have been so many different types of lights that have come out it can get a little bit overwhelming, sometimes confusing, as to what we could use for our seed starting. So what I'm going to look at today is something that I was trying to find that could be viewed as an equivalent to a T5 fluorescent grow light. I think that whenever it comes to fluorescent lighting, T5 lights are probably your best option. They're very efficient, they work very well for seed starting. I think that LED lights are great though, and is it possible to find something that will perform in the same way? What that means is you're looking at similar, maybe even better energy consumption, not requiring as much power, but your upfront cost should be about the same, maybe less, but certainly not much more. In addition, one of the great things about a T5 fluorescent light is you don't need a lot of vertical space. So imagine having a big shelf system where you have multiple tiers and you want to put a lot of different trays of seedlings. So for this test, I was trying out a two shelf system and on the top shelf, I had a T5 fluorescent light. This was a two foot, four tube, 96 watt light going for around $89 on Amazon. I calculated the coverage area to be about the same as the dimensions of the light itself, meaning 304 square inches. So at the purchase price for the coverage area, you were getting around 29 cents per square inch of coverage. Now, for an LED counterpart to this, I needed something that could distribute the light evenly over the entire surface and at the same time the light would be able to be placed pretty closely to some seedlings and be not too intense while being strong enough to get good results. So looking at some of these LED panels that are out there, not the really high-end ones but those very very low-end ones that are not too much money I thought, why not try a couple of these? So first I picked out a 14 watt light. This is a 12 inch by 12 inch light covering the same amount of area, 144 square inches, costing 24 cents per square inch of coverage. For the second spot, I thought, why not try something different? Maybe an all blue light. Blue is good for vegetative growth, right? So. I found a 13.8 watt light that came to about 25 cents per square inch of lighting area. Well, when I got the lights in, I was not very pleased with one of the readings I got. Through my experience, I have recognized the need to actually test the wattage on any LED that I receive. Measure it yourself just to be sure. It's interesting because the 13.8 watt light on my power grid when I hooked up my kilowatt was actually coming in at 15 watts. So I had no issues with that. But whenever I tried out this 14 watt light, it was only pulling just a hair over 9 watts, which is very unacceptable to be about 5 watts less than what it was claiming. And when I contacted the seller calling them out on it, they quickly issued me a refund, asking me not to leave a bad review. Well, we'll see what happens about that. But I had to go buy another light, and this time I figured I'd be better to err on the safe side going a little bit higher in wattage. I found a 45 watt light that comes to around 27 cents per square inch of coverage, still just a little bit less than a T5. So for the initial investment, we're right where we need to be. But this one, when I tested it, was coming in at about 29 watts of consumption. So they shortchanged me on power as well. But 
I'm definitely at a better point to where I have more optimism. Just to show how the 14 watt, well, 9 watt light compared to the 45 watt, well, 29 watt light in regards to light intensity, I put a little app on my phone here and just ran it to see, okay, what's the lux? Uh, I know this isn't going to be super accurate, but I held it at the same distance and the lower powered light was coming in at 2,300 lux thereabouts and the 45 watt one was coming in at 4,200 lux. So these are the parameters I was looking at and now whenever it came to the actual test bed, I actually did this entire experiment once through using a different method than what you'll see later. I started out using regular seedling trays, but in the spot where I was growing these, they were in just like a little spare bedroom and I wasn't really happy with the mix. I was getting that green slime stuff, which is pretty gross, but it was actually pretty mildewy and I think it was causing my wife to have an allergic reaction to like some mildew, some spores that were being in the air. I had to scrap this experiment, pulling these out and uh, just rethinking my entire approach, which led me to my final method of testing that I opted with. And that was to try growing some lettuce in a crap key method of hydroponics. So I mixed up a nutrient solution that is completely identical and used that for the same type of lettuce plant. That's how I'm ultimately testing these lights with some lettuce growing hydroponics. And what I used for this experiment for the lettuce was this Tom's Thumb lettuce, which you can get from botanical interests. So I really like this lettuce. I've used, used it for some different things and I wanted to see how it would do this time. Finally, it's the last day of this experiment. I'm pulling the plug. And this is what the lettuce looks like under the T5s. And under here, under the LEDs, we have a big difference in growth. In particular, under this very low light, this blue, I have hardly any roots growing. I do have some better roots growing and some better size under this LED. Uh, but... The T5 uh, definitely gave us the best results. So I'm going to pull these out, put them downstairs, and we will get a better look. Well, guys, today it looks like LED has lost the battle. T5 is the winner. This is the one that said it was 45 that wasn't. This is the one that was all blue LEDs. Very little growth here. Definitely more growth. These two, I'm not happy with the way the leaves themselves look. I had some serious tip burn and deformed leaves with these, yet I'm using the exact same solution in all of them, and I didn't have that issue at all in this one. But we can still see, though, with general mass, where these all came in at, and T5 takes the crown in this situation. If you're looking for some sort of a panel LED system and expecting it to be able to do what just a basic affordable T5 system can do, well, you need to find something more than 15 watts. You need to go up higher. Although I personally love LED grow lights, there are some models that simply perform better than others. And just because they're efficient, just because they're LED, that doesn't mean that they're going to give you outstanding performance. You do need to be consuming a certain amount of wattage, a certain amount of power, in order to generate enough light, enough photons, to be able to properly activate your plant's growth, to be able to build the mass that you're going to want, that way you have large, healthy plants that are ready to go outside for the growing season. So, Maybe this has been able to demonstrate some of the differences in growth compared to power consumption and helping to see that there are times that LEDs just can't keep up. 
they just can't perform even against something as simple as a fluorescent light. That can save you some aggravation and wasted time and definitely save you from wasting your money. I hope that this video has been able to help you out. Thanks very much guys for watching and I appreciate